Hey everyone, welcome to this introductory video for tool-assisted speedrunning Celeste. In this video we're going to cover how to get the Celeste tasking tools up and running, and how to create and playback tasks. This particular tutorial is going to focus on the Steam version of Celeste for Windows. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on over to the GitHub page for Celeste Tasks, link in the description, scroll on down to the README, and we're going to install Everest. If you've already got Everest installed, then you can obviously skip this step. So for this, just download the latest installer exe. And once that's done downloading, then we can just go ahead and launch it. It's going to ask if it's OK to run this file. We tell it yes. And my computer has a little bit of an issue with the Everest installer for whatever reason, but I happen to know that if I just press tab three times and then hit enter, then that'll go ahead and put me on the option for installing. It's going to go through this little animation. We're going to wait for that to finish. And now that Everest is installed, we can go ahead and install Celeste Tasks using the one click installer at this link. So once again, we're going to scroll on down and we're going to click on the one that has the little Windows icon. It's going to ask us if we want to open it using the Everest protocol and we tell it yes. And just like that, we've installed the Celeste Tasking tools. You may notice on this page there is also a place where we can download the Celeste Studio. However, we're going to go ahead and grab the one from GitHub instead. So go ahead and save that. And while we're on this page, you might also want to notice that there's a handy Actions Available section, which tells you all of the buttons you can press if you ever forget them. In particular, I always forget that O is the secondary confirm button. And the playback of the input file tells you how to use all of the different keyboard shortcuts for both keyboard and controller, as well as breakpoints is pretty useful to know. While we're on the GitHub, we're also going to download uh, some task files. However, I'm going to go ahead and go on over to Universe Cat's GitHub because the files here tend to be a little bit more up to date. And we're going to scroll on down and go ahead and grab the 6C reflection task. So I'm just going to click on raw and save page as 6C reflection dot Now let's just put that on the desktop for now. All right, now that that's done, we're going to begin mucking about with settings files a little. Uh, this step is pretty much optional. You really only need to do it if you want uh, some quality of life features or if you can't get the tools to work with the default key bindings for whatever reason. So we're going to go ahead, open up Steam, right click on Celeste, go to Manage, and go to Browse Local Files. And under Saves, you can see right now we've currently only got uh, the default files for the game. But if we go ahead and launch Celeste, you can see now that we've installed Everest, it's going to ask us what we want to do with it. I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't need any help. And we're just going to go into the mod options and back out again. And what that'll do is it'll save our mod settings, which creates this handy dandy mod settings Celeste task file. Now I'm going to go ahead and exit out of Celeste before I begin monkeying with this, because that's the only way I know of to reload the settings once you edit this file. We're going to go ahead and open this up using Notepad, or you can use any other uh, plain text editor. And you'll notice it's already got some key bindings for us. The key start is right control and open bracket. The fast forward is right control and right shift. The frame advance is open bracket and the pause key is close bracket. Which is a bit of a misnomer because this isn't really the pause key, this is more of the resume execution key. Um, so right off the bat what you can do is you can edit some of these controls. I know some people like to use just right control for the start and right shift for the fast forward because it's one less button to press and you don't have to do as many finger acrobatics. 
Uh, but what we're going to do in here is we're going to go ahead and set up a key for graphics. I like to set that to G. I'm going to set a key for the hitboxes. I like to set that to age. Makes sense. Graphics G, hitboxes age. And then for the camera, I'm just going to set that to F because all three keys are sort of right next to each other. F, G, H. It makes sense for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put disable achievements to true because otherwise it's really easy to just get all of the achievements in the game from tassing, which I find is a little annoying. Um, the default path I'm going to set to level files, and the reason you do this is so that when the so that when a task reads from another task, it knows where to go and look for it. With that done, we're just going to go ahead and save the file, close out of that, and while we're in the folder here, let's go ahead and make our level files folder. And inside of that, we're going to drop the reflection test right there. One thing I should mention before moving on is if we go back into our saves thing, this file, all of these uh, key names, they come from the .NET Windows input namespace. Um, so if you're having any trouble figuring out what key is what, just go to this web page. Again, there's a link in the description. Um, and you can see all the keys that are available. And different ones depend on different keyboard layouts, but I will say that just letters should always work. So if you're having trouble, set this to P, set that to, I don't know, L, whatever, should be just fine. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and open Celeste back up. And we're also going to open up that Celeste Studio that we downloaded. If you're just joining us from the earlier section, welcome back. The first thing you want to do is go into Mod Options and make sure that Celeste Tass is enabled. And then we're going to go ahead and just load up into any level. And in fact, let me turn on Debug Mode, because I personally like tassing in Debug. It, it adds just a lot of extra quality of life stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and load up into any level. And now going over to our input editor, uh, you'll notice that it says 06 at the bottom. Instead of searching, that means it's hooked onto the game and is working correctly. You can see that we're in room 6 of level 1. Now I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to type in 1J. Go back to the game, and I'm going to press right control. I'm going to hold down right control and press the open brackets. And as you can see, it ran the task. Madeline jumped, and it also brought up this useful info bar, which we can see down here, which contains a lot of useful things. First of all, we've got the current, uh, the current frame that we're on. If we had a longer task, for instance, a thousand, you can see it tells us that we have a thousand frames in our task, and if we run it, then you can see what frame we're currently on. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. We've got our current position in the map. We've got our speed, which is how fast Madeline thinks she's going. And then we've got our velocity, which is how fast she's actually going. And most of the time, these two will be the same values, but they can differ if you're dealing with levels that have, for instance, uh, wind or moving blocks or anything else that is pushing Madeline. We've got our stamina, which controls how many wall jumps we can do. Uh, we've got the current timer, and we've also got this useful section down here which tells us, for instance, that we currently have a dash we can use. We are standing on the ground, meaning that we can jump, uh, and it tells us the current room number, which is useful for uh, annotating your tasses. So the next thing I'm going to do, let's go on and get out of this, I'm going to hit Control o to open up level files. You can see we've got a Celeste Tass in the root directory. This is the file that uh, Celeste Tass reads from anytime it's executing. This is the file that the game uses. However, anytime we open up a file, so for instance I'm going to open up the Reflection Tass, 
what Celeste Studio is going to do is it's going to copy this file over to here. Just like so. So now our Celeste task in the root directory is reading from the 6C task. So if we go on over to the Reflection C side. And once again, I'm going to hit right control and the open bracket to start the task. You can see it restarts, and there she goes. I can hit right control and open bracket again to stop the task, and then it gives me back control, and I can play the game as normal from wherever the task left off. While the task is going on, if I hit just open bracket, that'll pause the task. So this does not give me back control, it just allows me to pause, and then if I hit the close bracket, that'll resume the task. While the task is playing full speed, if I hit right control and right shift at the same time, it'll speed it up. And while the task is paused, if I hit right control and right shift at the same time, then it'll go at a very slow speed. So those are all the key bindings that you're going to be using while tassing. And then there's also... There's also the keys that we set up in the settings file. So if I hit H now, that'll turn on hitboxes. You almost always want to be tassing with hitboxes on, because it'll make it a lot easier to tell when you're on the ground, when you're next to a wall, how much room you have to get around things. Uh... G to simplify the graphics, which can be useful on some levels where the graphics are just annoying and get in the way and make it more difficult to view the hitboxes. And then of course we've got center camera for sections like... like this. You can see typically when we run it, Madeline is going so fast that she just flies off screen. However, if we center the camera and go back to this section, Now it's a lot easier to tell what's going on because the camera is directly centered on Madeline's position. Uh, you can also use uh, the in-game options. If you go into mod options down to Celeste Tass, you can enable and disable any of these from here as well. So now the last thing I'm going to mention in this video is making tasses. Uh, the first thing you want to do is obviously create a file. So if you just go ahead and do Control shift s uh, that's going to let us save a file. And let's just call it, I don't know, My Awesome Tasks. Go ahead and save that into our level files. And now we can go ahead and start our task. Every task starts like that. And then let's just have it, I don't know, do a single dash and that'll be it. So I now go ahead and launch this. And of course I need to wait a bit for the level to load. And you generally want to also include a header for what level you're currently working with. Just like that, you can see which level you're on down here. And also in the debug menu, area 00, zero up there in the top left. And also in the F6 menu, you can see which room you're in up in the top left once again. Um, I will say one last thing is that as you're making a task, if you go ahead and take a break and close out of Studio, open up Studio once more, now it doesn't remember which file you had open. So now instead of reading from my awesome task, it's reading from the default Celeste.tas, which as you'll remember, are currently identical. But if I do a whole bunch of work on my task, let's say I add a whole bunch of stuff to it, and I'm really happy with this, but I forget that I'm currently working out of the Celeste task file, and then open up uh, some other file, like let's say Reflection, and try and go back, you can see now that all of my work is gone. So that's one semi-annoying thing that you want to keep in mind anytime you're doing Celeste tasking, is that you, as soon as you open Studio, 
you always, always, always want to also then open whatever file you're working on, even if it seems like it's currently open as it is. Um, so yeah, that's all for this video. I hope it helped out. Uh, good luck and have fun.